More than 24 hours after a shooting at the Mall of Millennia, 19-year-old Trayvon Graham sits in jail, charged with attempted first-degree Orlando police say one of his intended targets was 20-year-old Jaquarius Smith, a local rapper known as Glock 9. If you're anyone, and you know it's been hot in them Florida streets between AFNF's Glock 9 and 438's Hot Boy, messed up that friends make for the best enemies. Glock 9 and Hot Boy went from bros to foes. Close affiliate LPB Pooty was part of the trio, even dropping a song together that never officially released, but now it's all heat in the streets between the rappers and their rival gangs. Things hit the fan on October 8th when shots were fired at the mall at Millennia Orlando with the intended target being a bullet for Glock 9. Luckily, he escaped unharmed, but the stage is all but set for things to pop off. Glock 9 and Hot Boy been on a wave flooding the Florida rap scene, both doing their thing and being cool, but somewhere along the line, the relationship turned sour after Hot Boy went to prison and came back home to reclaim his throne as the king of Florida. I let you niggas have y'all little time to shine. Really, I'm supposed to take this shit over. I'm supposed to been take this shit over. But I went to jail. You feel me? So, so, I don't know. I went to jail, right? So niggas get their little chance to shine, right? So now when I get out, I take back over. I take back over when I get out. Now they hate me for that? What? These dudes have been at each other's neck since their bond severed, going back and forth on the gram and resulting in lives being lost. Glock 9 is under watchful eye of law enforcement with a stream of arrests, one being in 2019, which resulted in 17 charges. Yet, that don't stop the 10% rapper from enacting the lyrics within his raw rhymes. His gang, AFNF, the army, short for all family, no friends, has been in a dangerous war with Hot Boys 438. Both said to be two of the most dangerous gangs in Orange County and on the top of the FBI's radar. The FBI says they're going to be looking at all gangs in Orange County, but they're taking a key interest in the gangs 438 and the Army. Orange County Sheriff's detectives say they are behind the recent rash of here, and the FBI says they want to stop them. The attempted hit on Glock 9 at the mall at Millennia was the most recent after a string of shootings, and the rappers continue altercations. Authorities say it all ties into a long line of carnage by the gang becoming escalated since the drive-by incident of alleged 14-year-old gang member Dequarvius Fudge. The suspect would later be apprehended as 18-year-old Lorenzo Hall, who was a shooter hanging out the Nissan Altima, along with two others, Chauncey Cleckley Jr. and Malachi Thomas. The situation between the AFNF and 438 factions of Glock 9 and Hot Boy also claimed the innocent lives of 3-year-old Dequane James Felix Jr. and 14-year-old Dennis Joshua Atkinson within a 24-hour time frame. Blood was in the trail of wherever Glock 9 and Hot Boy treaded, and sooner than later, it hit deeper to home. April 14, 2020, AFNF affiliate Demetrius Cox found Hot Boy 438 affiliate Wolf Luther King Luma at a house party in Davenport and fired at the 20-year-old fatally wounded him. Wolf was dropped off at a hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. The hatred runs deep between Glock 9 and Hot Boy's B. Even after Wolf got smoked, another Glock 9 affiliate went on to target his ops at the funeral of slain 438 member in what officers say was retaliation for Cox's arrest. Four victims would be injured, but sadly, a Coe High School football star, Dexter Wrench Jr., wouldn't make it. Following some other news tonight, too, an Okoe high school football coach is speaking out after one of his star players was shot and killed. The 18-year-old was scheduled to play for the University of Louisville. After a deep investigation into his passing, the suspect shooter was identified as AFNF affiliate Jeremiah Robinson. Only after he was fired at and deleted an attempt to take out Hot Boy's right hand and second in command in the 438 gang, Van Sean Sands. On July 7, 2020, Jeremiah Robinson and fellow AFNF homeboy Jermaine Monterio Ingram Jr.
pulled up the Sands spot at Powers Ridge Court. Robinson and Ingram sent shots into the vicinity of Sands, but Sands wasn't having it, and returned fire with the rifle, striking Robinson in the head and Ingram in the hand. Robinson passed away five days later at the Orlando Regional Medical Center. Van Sean Sands will be apprehended a month later after a warrant for his arrest was issued and charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, avoiding more serious charges as his retaliation was deemed self-defense. Von Sean Sands repeatedly questions why he's being arrested outside of the Florida Mall last month. While bodies between the two camps continue to pile in the streets, Glock 9 and Hot Boy continue to add fuel to their feud on social media, accusing each other of ratting to the feds and both seemingly hinting towards receipts of the 6 9 associated traits. Y'all read it. Y'all check it. Can't end. Both rappers responded on live to the allegations, denying any truth in each claim. Oh, yeah. It, it is. I hope Toy Ad watching this shit so she go tell her son to get his money right, bitch. Come finna sue your dumb ass for false imprisonment, false allegations, all that, ho. I swear to God. Oh, book him suing your ass, bitch, so your money better be straight, ho. On game, bitch. The fuck? Bitch, you gon'. Since I supposedly said that. Hey, okay, so why in a statement it don't say the boy Walker said? I don't see that. I never even been, I ain't never go to jail for none of that. I never been questioned for none of that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the background. Why niggas trying to throw me in something? Hold on. Why niggas hey, trying to throw me in something? Hold on. Hold on. While the FBI tried to get a hands on the two gangs. FBI, a special agent was inside the operations center at a news conference within the last hour. He told us the agency is bringing in what he calls the Safe Streets Task Force. He says his agents are going to be ready to go after the 438 and the Army gangs with federal muscle now and possibly put them behind bars for a very long time. Their beef show no signs of slowing down. On October 8, 2020, Hot Boy and 438 set out to lay the beef to rest, sending shots to take the life of accused AFNF leader Glock 9 while at the mall at Millennia in Orlando. The incident resulted in no life loss nor injuries, but incited a number of law enforcement officials to swarm the scene. Beefing in the private streets can get by, but when the ops are targeting in public domain, that's when things reach a point of no return in the eyes of the law. Already having young life killed in the aftermath of their beef, this time, it could have ended even worse by injuring many innocent bystanders. The mall was painted in red and blue lights. As cops swooped in to make the arrest of Hot Boy affiliate and label shooter Trayvon Graham and failed assassination target, Glock 9. As cops reviewed footage that was captured of the incident, one other 438 member suspected to be the driver, Joshua Caleb Holder, was arrested. The last suspect named by officials as Hot Boy affiliate and owner of the car used in the drive-by, Angel Morales, was still on the run from law enforcement. Police officers say three suspects exited the mall and entered into a white BMW with Florida tag IU61KB, circled the parking lot, and opened fire once Glock 9 was in sight. The trio then sped off. Although Glock 9 was the victim, his arrest was even more serious in nature, as it wasn't actually tied to the shooting attempt on his life, but to a July 7th neighborhood incident in Bleasdale Avenue, Orlando, where eyewitnesses placed him at the scene, spraying up a residential home with a mother and children of four with bullets. Investigators say he had a warrant out in connection with this shooting in July on Bleasdale Avenue in Orlando, where a home was shot up with people inside. The incident was said to be because of jealousy toward his cousin, Cutum Reese, that was also a rapper gaining traction in the Florida scene. Her name Cut him Reese. Soft ass nigga, dawg. That nigga Reese's Peace. Reese's Pieces. Sweet as hell. Chocolate chip cookie. Fuck ass nigga, dawg. This shit crazy. Ah, wolf in the spat of little soft ass nigga. You know, let him be great. You feel me? Y'all folks from nigga trail. Wait, okay, Y'all on nigga trail. Y'all make about this supposed ass. <laughs> okay. Nigga, all them nigga Alpha David, B. Anthony Williams. That's supposed to be Jaquavia Smith cousin. What the fuck y'all telling the police shit like? The daughter told authorities she saw two black sedans in front of the house and about eight men with weapons hop out, two of which were ballpark, a close associate of Glock 9 and Glock 9 himself. Glock 9 was arrested in July for an attempted hit and weapons charge for said incident, but was released on $35,600 bond. 
The incident at the mall only sparked a deeper pursuit for the AFNF rapper, and eventually, officers made the arrest on a warrant for possession of a firearm by a felon and possession of a stolen short-barreled rifle. The firearm was tied to him via DNA analysis and was found to be involved in the shooting and a slew of other crimes in the area. Talking to WFTV Channel 9 reporter, Lock 9 maintained his innocence and denies all ties to being the leader of AFNF gang. I feel like they just saying I'm a leader, like they trying to say I'm a, I'm a gang leader, but I'm not no gang leader. I'm 20 years old. All these, all these wrong behind me, all these people who they trying to say I'm leading is older than me. AFNF is an LLC that you created for your rap group? Yeah, it's like a label. It's like my bank. When, they, when, I, when I get paid through YouTube and all that stuff, my bank, is, it, that's what it come on the AFNF LLC. And stands that there was no beef between the rival factions. No beef whatsoever. I, we know all them. I, I, them, my, them, my, them my boys. I'm going to call their phone right now. And... The blush that seems to never end between Glock 9 and Hot Boy and their gang ties with AFNF and 438. Life continues to be lost and more certainly will if nothing gives. Glock 9's close friend, AFNFJ, is only another example to add to the statistic. And the taunts from Hot Boy and his homies over his passing will only prolong more retaliation. For real, brother. Cook. We don't want no problem, cook. Damn, cousin. Cook. Cousin, go dig your dead dog up. Sometimes that nigga be coming around. That nigga be coming around. Cook. We ain't do that, cook. We ain't do that, cook. We ain't do that, cook. I'll buy you a shovel, go dig his ass up. These dudes are straight to the core. Getting locked up ain't stopping the beef. Nah. Come and take a seat. You're talking about all that, that money that was in the center console? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's being confiscated. You got to prove that it's not drug related. All right, sir. Okay. But I appreciate you telling me that it's your money. All right, I'm going to wait for you. And with guns and ammunition being accessible to both gangs, things may get worse before even having a chance to get better. That's it for this vid. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when the next video drops. I'm out.